In this video today at Medical Sciences made easy by Naftali Muhumza, we want to look at the diagnosis of diabetes mellitus. This is part two. There is part one. Please, if you haven't watched Diagnosis of Diabetes mellitus, part one, which has both clinical and part of laboratory diagnosis, first watch it, because this is part two. And today we want to focus on methods which are done in the laboratory. In the first video, we looked at HbA1c, and we looked at fasting, both fasting and random blood sugar. And they are reference ranges. So in this one, we want to focus on oral glucose tolerance test. Then we shall look at glucose oxidase method and hexokinase method. So in this video, we are looking at how do we determine glucose levels in our blood using oral glucose tolerance test, glucose oxidase method, and hexokinase method. So you want to begin with OGTT, which is known as oral glucose tolerance test. And this test is done in the laboratory on, on patients who has impaired impaired tolerance, which, they, which have impaired glucose. What is impaired glucose is whereby you find the fasting blood sugar is between is between 6.0 to 7.0 mil mole per liter. That is impaired. Then for two hour postprandial or random, between 7.8 to 11.1 mil moles. So these ones we call them impaired, what we call impaired glucose. So because they have impaired glucose tolerance, meaning their body is not coping up with glucose they eat in blood, in, in food. So we normally recommend this test. And what is the significance? The significance of this test, we want to use it for diagnosis of diabetes meritus, and we also want to we give a standard glucose dose. We give a standard glucose dose to rule out any abnormality. Here we can use it to rule out abnormalities in glucose metabolism or in carbohydrate metabolism. So here in the OGTT, we are giving a standard glucose dose to see if the body can cope up with this standard glucose dose. And majorly for adults, we give 75 grams of glucose dissolved in 250 to 300 mils. So we give a standard glucose dose of 75 grams dissolved in 250 to 300 mils. And after dissolving it, they take it. This is for adults. But for children, children, we give them 1.75 grams per kg. So what you do, you, measure, you weigh the child to know the kilograms, then you multiply the kilograms by 1.7 grams of glucose and it will become the standard glucose dose. So you, we have to know the adults, where the adults are given 75 grams dissolved in 250 to 300 mils of drinking water. And the children, we give them 1.7 grams per kg to see if their body can cope up or can deal or can tolerate this standard glucose dose. And how do we prepare the patient? How do we prepare the patient for this test? Preparation of patient for OGTT. How do we prepare them before they do this test? So whenever we have done fasting, it is in between here. Then the two-hour postprandial is between here. 
we can prepare these patients for oral glucose tolerance test, whereby in the under preparation, you're going to make sure that these patients should be on, on a heavy carbohydrate meal, on a carbohydrate meal, carbohydrate meal greater than 150 grams should be on this meal for th in three days, for three days before the test. For three days before the test, should be on the standard glucose meal of above 150 for three days. And this patient should have fasted, should fast for 10 to 16 hours. That is, you tell this patient that goes home, then at night by 10 p.m., by 10 p.m. should have eaten food, and after eating food by 10 p.m., then the rest of the time between 10 p.m. and 8 a.m. in the morning, they should not take anything except plain water. They can take on a plain. They should not take any soda. They should take any juice beyond 10 p.m. We prefer fasting at night because it is easy to fast at night. So at 10 p.m. they have, they make sure they have eaten. Then from 10 p.m. to 8 a.m., they should take only plain water, but not any food, any juice or any soda. So the fasting time should be between 10 to 16 hours. And it is probably done majorly at night. Then after preparing this patient, this patient should not, during these 10 to 16 hours, they should not smoke. Should not smoke, because this smoking contains nicotine and data which can affect it carbohydrate metabolism. So they should not smoke during fasting. During fasting, they should not smoke. And these patients during fasting, they should not drink alcohol. Should not drink alcohol during fasting. Because alcohol, you know that the metabolism of alcohol produces acetyl-CoA. -E. And this acetyl CoA can be used to produce more glucose. So it can give false high results when someone has taken alcohol and when someone has smoked. And these patients also, they should not be, should not be on, on drugs, on treatment of drugs like contraceptives, oral contraceptives and uh, NSAIDs, the non-steroidal inflammatory drugs. So they should not be on oral contraceptives. These ones we use for family planning, and they should also not be on NSAIDs, which can affect glucose levels. And when these patients have all or have passed all these requirements, in the morning, these patients, when they come to the laboratory, they should be left, should be left to rest for at least 20 minutes. Because they might be anxious or they have come moving, so you need to rest them, to come down and assure them that this test is not going to harm them. So within 20 minutes, they should be left to rest. And these patients also, during a day before this test, they should not do a strenuous exercise. Should not do heavy exercise one day before the test, or even during the day of the test. So one day and the day during the test, these patients should do restrain themselves from heavy or strenuous exercise. Then after they have been left to rest for at least 20 minutes, that's when even another preparation is that during the test, during the test after taking this standard glucose dose, they should, during the test, this patient, they should sit upright should sit 
upright in upright position to enable gastric or stomach emptying. This upright position enables gastric emptying. And during this test, they should sit upright in one position. They should avoid movements and any work that is heavy during the test. And this is what we call preparation of patients for OGT. After we have prepared these patients, we go to the procedure. How do we do this oral glucose tolerance test? Under the procedure is that you assemble the requirements, assemble the requirements, that is the glucometer, you need the glucometer, you need the OGTT chart, we need the glucose, we need the weighing scale to measure this glucose, we need the weighing scale to measure the glucose. And after we have assembled these requirements, we, we prepare the OGTT chart, prepare the oral glucose tolerance test chart, whereby this chart we shall have where to record the fasting, blood fasting levels, and the two hour post planning. So we shall prepare this. Whereby we shall have the results, glucose results. These are results for the fasting sample and the two hour post planning. And they will be recorded depending on the glucometer we are using. So after preparing this chart, we weigh, we shall weigh, using the weighing scale, we weigh 75 grams of glucose and we dissolve it in 250, to three, between 250 to 300 mils. So in this case, I can even consider 300 mils of drinking water. And after dissolving them, this drinking water, we should, you first ask a patient if they have ulcers before you add lemon. Because we know that this solution is so sweet that someone can develop nausea and vomiting. But before adding lemon, we should always assess if they are not having peptic ulcers. Because we know lemon can stimulate ulcers. So if they are not, Having peptic ulcers, we can add lemon to prevent vomiting, to prevent nausea and vomiting. And after that, putting lemon, we are going to instruct the patient. We're going to instruct the patient so after putting this, before we instruct the patient to take this standard glucose dose, we take off a fasting blood sample. We take off the fasting blood sample and we measure its glucose levels. We, we, we take off the fasting blood sample, we determine its glucose concentration and we record it on the OGT chart. And after recording this first, after taking off the fasting blood sample, we instruct the patient to take this standard glucose solution in, it should be it's to take the standard glucose dose, glucose dose within 15 minutes. Within 15. So within 15 minutes, this patient should finish these 300 mils of a standard glucose. And of course, after taking this, after taking this standard glucose dose, this patient should restrain from movement, should sit in upright position. The patient should sit 
in the upright position during after taking you you start the timer after taking immediately as the patient starts taking this solution you start the timer and you time for how long for two hours and during these two hours the patient should be seated in upright position should be seated in upright position the neighbor gastric emptying but if they cannot sit in upright position you can instruct this patient to sleep on their right they can sleep on the right side since the abdomen is on the left so when someone sits on sleeps on the right still there is gastric emptying and after two hours of taking a standard glucose dose we take off or we collect the two hour postplandio glucose sample postplandio sample and we determine its glucose concentration determine the glucose concentration and we record of course and we record so after determining the two hour postplandio we come and also record it in the OG TT chart. Then after we have recorded the reference range, the reference range for fasting, for fasting, it should be, it should be between 3.6 to 6.0 millimoles per liter. Then the two hour post plan sample should be between 4.5 to 7.8 mil mol per liter. Then if we get if we get the fasting, this is normal. So for someone to have impaired glucose. For impaired, you find the fasting is between 6.0 to 7.0 mil mole. This is impaired. This one is impaired. Then for two hour post plan deal, between 7.8 to 11.1 mil mole per liter. This one is also impaired. Then for diabetic, for someone to, to be declared diabetic with this test, for someone to be declared diabetic with this test, for diabetic, is whereby fasting sample is greater than, is giving you greater than 7.0 mil mole per liter. And when the two hour post plan deal, two hour post plan deal is giving you greater than 11.1 mil more per liter. So this is the for normal people who are not diabetic. And this is for the ones who are impaired, who cannot tolerate a standard glucose dose. And the one who are diabetic have those ones. So these are the ranges you can use to diagnose people after doing oral glucose tolerance test. After finishing this test, we have seen it is a test whereby the patient is given a standard glucose dose to see if they can cope up with it. And we have seen with the Dugo dose is 75 grams and for children it is 1.75 grams per kg. And we have seen how we will prepare the patient and how the test is done. So after finishing OGTT, the finishing OGTT, in the next video, we are going to look at hexokinase method and glucose and glucose oxidase method. Thank you so much for listening until the end. Be blessed.